tonight. Let's all pray. Dear Lord, just thank you so much just for the beautiful sunshine outside this, this weekend, Lord. Just pray that tonight we can just be able to focus on your word. Thank you for bringing us here, giving us the opportunity to worship you and to fellowship and just to dig into your word, God. Just uh, forgive us of our sins and just thank you for dying for our sins, Lord. As this thing is your name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I've been told that those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ are the happiest people in the world, amen? amen. Uh, I also have been told by one preacher that some of us need to remind our face that it's okay to be happy. Uh, I'm here to tell you that there is joy in the Lord, amen? Uh, I've got a couple of announcements tonight that I want to make, and I've got just a few of them. I'm not going to read uh, the bulletins, and you see the announcement slides. I won't read everything that's in here tonight, but just want to make sure we're on the same page for a few, act, uh, a few things uh, some, some things that'll, that have, uh, you won't see on your April church calendar because they're, they're into the month of May, but I want to give us plenty of notice. Uh, each Wednesday night, uh, if you did not already know this, our young people from the twos and threes, fours and five-year-olds all the way up to the sixth grade uh, have been working through a, a program called Bible Challenge, and they've been learning uh, uh, not just necessarily what the Bible says, but they're learning to hide the Word of God in their heart. The Bible says that we may not sin against God. Uh, and so there is some Bible memorization that is taking place, and it is a competition-based program that takes place during the fall and the spring semesters. And so our church Bible challenge, we've done this a couple years now, uh, and it is an absolute blessing uh, and a challenge to any adult that's here when kids are up here quoting scriptures that we don't know. Uh, and so uh, that's going to take place on Sunday evening, May the 5th. And so I know that you haven't seen that on your calendar yet, but I wanted to, to get that put out there. These kids have been working very hard, and I just want to encourage you to be praying for them uh, and want to encourage you to attend. It'll be an absolute blessing. Also, just want to remind you again that we have been invited, along with other uh, Missionary Baptist churches in our Northwest Association here, we've been invited to uh, uh, Auburn for a quarterly fellowship on Friday night, May the 10th, and Saturday, May the 11th. Uh, if you hear that and you think, oh, well, that must not be for me because I'm not a preacher, uh, then let me just explain. This is not a preacher meeting. It is a fellowship meeting of people that, uh, that fellowship together in, in uh, Missionary Baptist churches. And so they'll be preaching Friday night. I believe Brother Jim Black will be preaching uh, one of the, either Friday night or Saturday morning message, whichever one it is. And I think Pastor Matt's supposed to bring a devotion. I don't know all that's going on. Uh, but if you're, if you're planning on going, right now I know of three families that are going. And so if you're the one that said, well, I would have liked to go, I just don't know that I have a ride. Uh, there's a good chance there's an extra seat belt on a, on a car that's already headed that way. Uh, and so if you're interested, if you want to go, please let me know. Uh, Auburn has asked. Uh, they're going to try to provide some meals. And so they've just asked for the best head count that they can come up with so that they can be the most prepared. So if you plan to go, please let me know here in the very near future, and I will relay information over to them. 
Uh, I've also got three other kind of announcements uh, that are not in your bulletin, and, and none of them are related, but I just want to give you three things. Uh, if you did not know this, we've got a couple of our young men in church here that, that on the regular, sometimes on a Sunday afternoon between churches and a lot of times on a Saturday, uh, but we've got a couple of our young men that are just constantly uh, out and about in, in, uh, in our homeless communities, uh, passing out our youth tracks, passing out gospel tracks, talking to people, leading people to the Lord. It happens on the regular, even if you don't know about this. Uh, one of the greatest needs uh, in, in this homeless community uh, is clothing items. And so I was asked if, if, uh, if I could just kind of make an announcement uh, that if you've got clothing items, uh, at this time of year, it's, it's okay in the day, it's still cold at night, and, uh, but if you've got items adult-sized, I said, I'm assuming you don't want kid-sized stuff, and, uh, but if you've got uh, adult-sized clothing items that you would be willing to donate, uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, what I told uh, Brother Curtis who was asking about this. I said, Brother, right out here on this back wall, we've had a coat rack. Uh, and about every two years, every single one of those hooks gets completely taken and there's no more room and nobody has touched those coats in two years. About a month ago, we pulled those down and nobody's asked about their coat yet. Uh, and so if you're missing a coat uh, and you would like to, to say, oh, I left my coat hanging on the rack, uh, they're in a box in the back over here and you can go grab your coat. Uh, uh, but unless someone's got a major objection, I told Brother Curtis, I said, look, those have been up there, some of them for two years, they've been gone for a month and nobody noticed. Uh, and so I think that those are the people that volunteered uh, those coats to whoever needs them. And so anyway, if you're looking for something, please let us know. But, but I was just asked to make that announcement. I said, absolutely, I will do that. Uh, and so we're going to try to just leave. There's a box in the back over here where the, the church uh, t-shirts are. There's a box underneath there that we'll try to just use as if you've got something you want to put in there, put it in there. Uh, and then when these young men need them, they can go grab them and take it with them. Uh, secondly, I, it's just kind of random, but I just was, just, uh, was told, I was made aware this morning. Uh, there's a young lady that visits our church that has two uh, wooden built kind of heavy duty picnic tables in the backyard that she doesn't need or want but said they're, they're way too nice to throw away. And so if anybody is looking uh, or, or would have a nice need for a picnic table, please let me know. I can put you in need with the person that has those. Uh, again, there's, there's two of those available. And then last but not least, on our prayer list, we've got Brother Roy and Sister Pam Johnson. And, uh, of course, Brother Roy uh, battling cancer, and, and uh, things are not going well. Uh, just to, to put it very, very bluntly, uh, uh, cancer is, is not only affecting the throat and the esophagus, making it hard to eat, but now it's also affecting the liver. Uh, Brother Roy is very jaundiced, and, and uh, uh, for, for I, I'm not a doctor, and I'm certainly not the Lord, uh, but it sure seems like his time on this earth is probably getting short. Uh, and so, uh, Sister Pam said that, uh, that several people have said, well, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? Uh, she's got an appointment on Tuesday that she really shouldn't miss. She's got her own doctor's appointment, uh, but her fear is when Brother Roy kind of wakes up, if he doesn't know what's going on, he tries to move, and, uh, and so uh, she's just asked if anyone would be willing on Tuesday uh, from about 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. to come up and just kind of sit with Brother Roy to give her the freedom to go to her doctor's appointment. And so several people have said if they could help. If, if you're interested, willing to do that, come let me know after services, uh, and I'll have you get in touch with them. Uh, but that would be a great blessing uh, both to you and to her. So I just wanted to make that need known. As far as other announcements, are there any other announcements that need to be mentioned tonight? If there is not, I want to take just a brief moment, and I wonder, do we have any prayer requests that we have not had a chance to, uh, to add to our list or, or any updates that need to be spoken? Yes, sir. I want to continue to pray for Brother Doug and Sister Treva Baxter. I understand they are under the weather, uh, and from the sounds of things, maybe it's, it's a little bit like a lot of us where I'm okay today and I'm not okay the next day. It seems like a little bit of a roller coaster, uh, and so we certainly just want to keep both of them uh, in our prayers. Are there others? Yes, sir. If you would do me the biggest of favors and remind me when church is over, uh, because I have learned I do not trust my memory, and I want to be able to, uh, to, to make sure that I, that I can kind of put you guys in contact. So praise the Lord. Amen. Others, Brother Lonnie. I want to remember this. I saw another hand somewhere. Yes, ma'am. All right, Jennifer's got her post-op coming up on Tuesday, and the prayer is that she might be released from some things and that she might uh, listen to the other things uh, that the doctor tells her and slow down when she needs to. So, uh, Others, Brother Frank.
And Brother Frank said he's got a niece that's going to adoption court Friday uh, to try to uh, uh, complete an adoption, and so just want to keep uh, prayers for this. Others, Brother John? Again, Brother Ryan and Sister Christy are missionaries that are, are heading out towards the building project. Some of you have been to uh, Binger, Oklahoma. You've been to Cedar Hills Baptist Youth Camp. Uh, there's a big Macedonian project coming up, and so Brother Ryan, Sister Christy, and Richard and Robin, and a few others are going there early to get prepared for this project. Uh, they left out on Wednesday, uh, and it sounds like they're about an hour uh, outside of, of the church camp now, which those of you that have been there means they're in the absolute middle of nowhere. Uh, and so anyway, just uh, we do pray uh, for their continued travel safety. And remember, Sister Christy, as she's battling some health issues uh, as well. Are there others? Yes, sir. I want to remember this request, amen, the Lord knows the details. Others, yes, ma'am. Sister Becky's friend, uh, and yes, that does exist, uh, but Sister Becky's friend, uh, Krista, uh, uh, she didn't, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but her friend Krista's husband having back surgery Friday, you said, and so just want to continue to remember him there for this procedure and recovery afterwards. Any others tonight? Yes, ma'am. I want to remember this unspoken request for our family. Yes, sir. I want to remember this unspoken. If you're like me, you've got a lot of things on your heart, and sometimes they make it out of your mouth, and a lot of times they just go from the heart to the Lord, and I'm so grateful that even when I have no idea how to pray, that there's a Holy Spirit that intercedes on our behalf, uh, and I'm grateful for that. If you would tonight, let's stand. We're going to say a word of prayer, and, uh, and then I'm going to turn the services uh, back to Brother Jason. I wanted to mention one more thing, as far as, and this is an announcement and a prayer request, uh, because here in a moment we're going to sing another song and take up an offering, and we remind you each Sunday evening that the Sunday evening offerings go towards our church camp. Uh, we've got some other things that go on in and around church that funnel into the church camp fund. Uh, the financial reports for the first quarter have come out. Uh, and we have fallen abysmally short on our church camp budget. Uh, and so uh, I, I think we, we should have, by budget, we should have received about $4,000 to stay on track for what church camp usually costs us. And I think we've brought in about 1100 uh, a little over that. And so I just wanted to make that need known uh, and just uh, certainly want to make that a matter of prayer so that hopefully by July we are not in scramble mode. I want to continue to pray for Brother Bill Jones. He did have successful surgery, and he is just in the, uh, the tedious and the arduous recovery process. So I want to just continue to remember Bill Jones in our prayers. Let's pray. God, I just love you. I just uh, come before you tonight, Lord, just thanking you. Uh, we thank you for the promise of your presence uh, where two or three are gathered. Father, we just thank you uh, for your provisions and your blessings upon this church. Father, we just thank you for the privilege tonight of prayer. Father, we are grateful that we can share our burdens one with another, but Father, we are most grateful that according to your word, through Jesus, we can boldly approach your throne of grace. Father, tonight, the request that we have made known, those that are written down, Lord, they are varied, they are wide, uh, there is a lot of them, and Father, we just uh, want to offer all of them up to you tonight and just pray that your will might be done. We pray, Lord, uh, that you might just uh, bless the remainder of our worship and singing, and we pray that you might just bless Brother Matt as he brings our message to us tonight, and these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Sing them over again to me.
just like Pastor Caleb was saying, uh, just a reminder that our offering goes towards church camp. With that, Brother Judah, can you please say the blessing? Dear Heavenly Father, we, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us our merry blessings, Lord. Please forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Please give us a good rest of tonight, Lord. Let me pray. Amen. Good evening. One person's excited to be here, huh? Good evening. evening. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. All right. I'm excited to be here. I did want, before we get started here, I just wanted to give a little update. As you all know that Becky and I will be heading out with the Nelsons to start another church in northern Idaho. Where that building is, we're not sure yet. But So just a little update on us as we are going to be your missionaries, right? So our house is under contract. It should be sold. We've got to be out of there by the 26th. So this next Saturday might need some strong backs. So I guess this is an update and maybe a request for some help to help move uh, some of our furniture out. We have bought a house in Hayden Lake now. So that will be done in June. Yeah, the math doesn't work. There's going to be a couple of uh, months where we'll be staying at Airbnb. And I've got to give all the glory to God. Because when we went into the home buying situation, I thought, this is the way it's going to be. We're going to make an offer. And then somebody from California with $500,000 cash is going to by the house. That happened once. The next house that came up, there was no bidding, there was nothing. It, God just opened the door and said, first come, first serve. So we got a house in Hayden Lake, and uh, God really is taking care of us because then we were like, what are we going to do for two months? Well, the cheapest Airbnb that we could find that would house us, dogs, cat, just fell right into our laps, and it was available for almost the whole time. So I got to give all the glory to God. And I've also got to ask for prayer requests because Satan knows what we're doing. And I've shared with some of you, you ever hear of you buy a money pit house and you sink money into it? We've got a money pit house to get out of, and Satan is breaking everything. He broke a lamp, a ceiling lamp, the garage door fell off the tracks the other day, the plumbers tore up the front yard, which my realtor says is not my front yard anymore, but whatever. Yesterday, after 14 years in that house, we live across from a baseball street, a baseball park, a lot of you have been to our house. Antonia's window got smashed. We've told her, Becky's lived in that, in that neighborhood for 35 years, so 
Satan is really working overtime, so please keep Becky, myself, Henry, Antonia in your prayers. I just want to be gone. I want it's ready to go on to the next chapter. And I'm so excited to do that, and I'm so excited that you guys are all behind us. I know that with your prayers, we're going to be all right, all right? So, Pastor Caleb last week started out a series called A Healthy Church, right? And it just happened to be, you know, I get my one Sunday night a month to come and bring God's Word to you, and I'm so excited. And it just fit that a healthy church is a praying church, right? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about prayer, right? What is prayer? John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Pretty simple, right? Jesus is telling them what to do. First, we must abide in Christ. That's the key, right? And if you look at abide in the Greek, the root words in that are dwell, remain, be present. It's more than just saying, yeah, I abide in Christ. It's really allowing Christ to live inside you. If you want to pray in earnest, you need to let Christ dwell inside of you, right? Second, my words and my words abide in you. That just goes hand in hand, right? We must let those words live inside of us, right? The best way to let Christ live in you is to know his word. Pick up your Bible, right? The red letters are right there for us. You're not just going to be, you know, what is that called? Photosynthesis synthesis or whatever. You just don't get to hold your Bible and it just... It's not photosynthesis, is it? That's what osmosis. osmosis. There you go. Yeah, you can't put your Bible under your pillow. I wouldn't recommend that. You're going to get a bad neck. You got to read God's word. You got to read God's word daily. You have to meditate on it. Don't just read it to check the box, especially in those red letters, man, right? I got to say, those red letters have changed my life. That's our Savior. That's what he said while he was here, right? The instructions and the key is if we truly live and abide in Christ and his words are in us, then what we pray for, it's going to be aligned with what Christ wants for our life, correct? We'll be in unison. I pray that everyone here is in unison with what Christ's plan for us. So let's read these couple of verses here. We're going to be in Acts. I guess I should have said that. Acts 12 and verse 5. <clears throat> Acts chapter 12 and verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God and him. We jump down to verse 12. And we had considered the thing. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you are a God that hears each one of our prayers and you ask us to bring all our prayers to you. God, and we know that through the price that Jesus paid and that he is at your right hand, he's the intercessor and he already paid that sin debt, so we can bring these prayers to you. It's in his name we ask and pray. Amen. I guess I do got to start out to Pastor Caleb sent some of us a video from Brother Roger Copeland, who's a great preacher down in Arkansas, on how to preach. I might be more nervous to be up here now after watching the 51-minute master class from Brother Roger Copeland on how to be a great preacher. So if I stumble, if I'm nervous, it's because watching videos on how to be a better preacher has now made me more nervous. But... We'll try to get through this, right? So if we read those verses, right, at first, the church must pray together. That's the first key. Together with focus. We see that. It says, uh, of the church unto God for him. They saw the issue that Peter was in. Peter was in prison, correct? They had just killed James. Herod was going a little crazy, thinking, the, you know, these people are loving when I persecute Christians. He was always wrongly imprisoned. He hadn't done anything, but he threw them in there. And he was deep in the prison. Verses 6 and 10 show us what's going on here, right? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and keepers before the door kept the prison. In verse 10, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them in his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. We'll get back to those, but I wanted... To paint the picture that Peter, most times when the people went to prison, they were bound by one hand to one guard. Peter had both hands bound to two different guards, sleeping between them. So the people in the church, they knew this, that the, his accounts and what was, he was going through was pretty dire, right? Herod was not about to let Peter get out, because that would qua cause quite an uproar. 
And so the church, they just threw out a quick Hail Mary and went home and that's it? No. That's not what the Bible says, right? They prayed for a miracle. Unto God, it says. They knew that at this point, Peter's only hope was to go to God in prayer. And they went to the Lord in one accord, right? The church was there praying that his will be done. If we're reading 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear it from heaven. That I know was written to the nation, but you think about it, it fits the church there in the book of Acts as well as today, does it not? How often do we go to God in prayer? I hope it's daily. I hope it's morning, noon, and night, not just on Sundays and Wednesdays. If you hang out with us on Friday nights, we pray too. But so what these verses are saying is that we must humble ourselves. When we think about humble, it's not just that in the church foyer when someone says, man, you're doing a really good job as a Sunday school teacher. You're like, ah, shucks, now. Nah. That's just what I got to do. This is a, a humility and a humbleness that is a true bow down moment. A moment when you realize that the one that created everything, he hung the moon and the stars, as some country songs say, and the heavens and the earth, the creator, he deems you worthy to die for. That's the humble I'm talking about. Right? Jesus knew you in the womb, and he knew that you would need the atonement that he could bring. If we truly examine ourselves and who we get to serve today, if we think about that, that is a humbling moment, right? That's what I wanted to infer on that part. From their wicked ways. That's easier said than done. Wicked sounds real bad, like, oh, I'm not wicked. I don't have to do anything like that, right? How about we realize that left on our own, we are lost. Sin is going to win. I didn't coin that, I don't think, but if you want to get a shirt, it says that, go for it. If we're truly humble and looking for God's will in our lives, we'll see that our fleshly desires are wicked in God's eyes. I've met a lot of people that like to go down. We, like Pastor Caleb said, we have some gentlemen in this church, and they go and they share the gospel with the people of the less fortunate. I met a lot of people who are like, come, let's feed the home, homeless every Thursday night because it makes you feel so good about yourself. That is not what God said, right? God said, put me first in everything you do. And that's what I can, I can honestly say because I know both these men that go out there and do that, they are doing it because they want to see God shine, not because they want to feel good about themselves and get some exercise. We need to put God first in everything we do. That's how that wickedness, we can turn away from it. We go back to the church there at Acts. They were focused on Peter's plight, were they not? What about our church today? I'm proud to say that I go to a church with a lot of prayer warriors. Amen? And an old Methodist author, E.M. Bounds, he wrote this. What the church needs today is not more or better machinery, not new organizations or more novel methods but men whom the Holy Spirit can use, men mighty in prayer. The Holy Spirit does not flow through methods, but through men of prayer. I like this because it reminds us that there is nothing new under the sun. We're not going to surprise God with a new way we do something to get that prayer to God. He wants us to humbly go to him, turn from our wicked ways, right? But what this this quote is saying is that God only needs real men and women to allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through them. Amen. And as a church, the more people we get to sell out for the Holy Spirit, the more God is going to use and bless this church. I can guarantee that. Amen. I want to encourage us all to really turn our lives over to Christ, to fully commit. And I'm, I'm not saying that here is my life, let me make church fit into it. How about here is my faith, here is my church, let me fit my life into it. That's what I'm saying. And don't think that I'm, I am up here preaching, but I'm talking to myself. I'm talking about to myself, mainly. Every time I get a chance to bring you guys some of God's word, he always puts on my heart what I need to work on. So I hope that I'm up here sharing God's word, and through what I'm trying to learn, I can share every, with everyone here, and maybe somebody can take something away from it, right? Think about that. Here's my faith. I'm going to fit the rest of everything into my faith. I lived the first way for a long time. I'm not, like I said. I'm still working on it to get better and better at it. 
Because let's be real here. Satan has so many distractions for us out there. He's got so many things that he wants to take us out of these walls. He doesn't want us to come here on Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Mondays for FBI. I'm excited to see what this church has got next. There's a couple more nights that we got nothing going on here. So let's get our money out of this building. Let's not fit in with the world. I don't know if you guys, but when I look around the world, it is not getting better. It is not getting more optimistic for me. And I'm all right. It's a little scary sometimes, but guess what? The Bible said it's going to happen, but the Bible says in the end we win. Amen? If we go back to Acts 12, 5, the next point I have is a church that prays without ceasing, it says, right? And with that, I wanted to, if you guys know me, you know I love Dr. David Gibbs, so I just wanted to play some words from him, and then we'll continue. My son had a horrible medical emergency, perfectly healthy, and in three months' time, he was dying. His chest bone grew in and touched his spine. His front and back came together. I mean, he was perfectly healthy, and then he started to have this huge dent, and in three months' time, he did terrific damage to his lungs, his heart, his kidneys. The front went in and touched his spine. And we're at the hospital, this great children's hospital, and they said, we've never seen anything like this, but we'd like to propose to you an emergency surgery. They took my wife in a room and they said, your son maybe has another day, possibly two. He's dying. But we'd like to try a surgery where we lift his ribs off his body and the heart doctor will come in and go to work on the heart and the thoracic surgeon on the lungs and we have all this team lined up. I said, can you do that? They said, we don't know. It's not been done before, but he's dying. I walked out of that room and I called the best doctor I knew. I grew up with him. His name is Ronnie Jones. And I said, Ronnie, I'm terrified. I explained it all to him. I said, what would you do if you were me? He said, David, if I were you, I'd find somebody who knows how to get a hold of God who knows how to pray. He said, you got the best doctors there are, but this is beyond good doctors. I hung up the phone and I didn't call the best preacher I knew. I didn't call the best church builder I knew. I called the best prayer I knew. Could I have called you? Would you have been the man would you have been the woman? He didn't pastor a mega church. I just knew he had a relationship with God. I called and I got his secretary and she said, oh, he's just left on vacation. I said, oh, please do not tell him I called. I hung up with him and 20 minutes later he called me. He said, why'd you call? I said, I know you're on vacation. I don't want to disturb you, but I told him my story. He said, David, I'm going to pull over and get a motel room. My family's going on without me. I'm going to get on my face before God, and I will not get up till you call me. Would you do that? Oh, I'd pray some for you, Brother Gibbs. Yeah, me too. But would you fast and pray and be on your face for someone else's prayer burden? They did the surgery. It took 27 hours. When it was all done, 
the lead doctor came out and he said, we lost him three times. But somehow, and these were his words, by a miracle we got him back. I called my friend who was praying and before I could tell him anything, he said, David, it got dark for three times. The devil was doing everything he could to kill that boy. But I stayed praying. Is he okay? I said, yeah. Prayer is not something good in the Christian life. Prayer is a commanded essential. Without the power of prayer, we've abdicated the most powerful thing we have because prayer moves the arm of the Almighty. You've got to have a voice. It's something God's got to talk to you. And number two, we've got to have prayer. us to without ceasing no stopping continual intense prayers James 5 6 says confess your faults one to another that you may be healed the fervor and prayer of a righteous man availeth much I know you guys have heard that because we love reading the book of James here right confess your faults one to another you're probably thinking brother Matt heck no I'm not telling everybody my issues why not how can another child of God help you unless we're open with one another? I'm not saying run through the foyer and yell all your sins. I mean, it, we might laugh at that. We're not in a, these other religions that telling another man absolves your sins. There's only one person that can do that. Amen? If we truly love one another, we trust one another as a church, we know God has brought us to this church for a reason. We should be okay admitting our faults one to another, amen? We should be okay telling each other what we need prayer for. I've never gone through what David Gibbs went through there. But some here may have. Confess our faults. Tell each other what we need so that we can pray, right? But on the flip side to that, if somebody opens up to you, church member, brother or sister in Christ, it's not time to judge that person for whatever their fault is. It's time to get on our face and pray, amen? We don't do that much anymore. I can tell you this, a little story. The first time I watched this was the first time it put me on my face to pray because I knew I wasn't doing it right. I knew I wasn't praying for my family, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I was not doing that correctly. I was, I was holding something back. And that's what I pray everybody here tonight. Stops holding something back from Christ. Go all in. And why don't we, we, we don't want to pass judgment because we don't want to scare the other ones away, right? I think Jesus says, why are you worried about the moat or the small thing in your brother's eye when you got that big old log in yours? That's not KJV, but that's what he said, right? 
back to the church, that knew, they knew that Peter, without prayer, he was lost. He was gone. Herod would eventually kill him in a spectacle so that the people would get an uproar and Christians would look bad again. It's still true today, right? We might, we might not be in prison, but each one of us need loads of prayer, amen? We each have our own battles. I don't know what yours is. I've shared some of yours of mine with you. We have our own battles and our own prisons in our lives. So the first step to being a church that prays without ceasing is we have to let the church know what we need in prayer. I'm not the super best at this. Maybe that's why God put this on my heart. Please, fervently, earnestly, and without ceasing, be in prayer for this endeavor that God has put me and my family on. Pray that through this new church, souls are saved, lives are changed, and disciples are made. The mission is going to be the same thing over there in Kootenai County as it is right here in Spokane County. Maybe we are praying one for another. Are we letting each other know that? We take the prayer list home. I know I look at it, pray for somebody in the morning. I try to pick a few of you to pray for, whatever you had brought to us. But I fall short when I don't tell you I'm praying for each one of you. There's so much media on how we can talk to each other. Call, text, email, Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, whatever it is. Use it. Let each one, let the person know that you're praying for them. Some of us are good about that. Even just a text, man. I know when I get a text that says, Brother Matt, I'm praying for you. It makes my day. Because I know that somebody here went to Christ and for me. Whatever that issue was for that day. I'll tell you what, living in this world, we're going to have a lot of issues. We need a lot of prayer. We go back to Peter. We know that story of the angel of the Lord. Except me, or is the rest of this chapter pretty funny, right? In verse 7, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined around the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. When we hear that word smote in the Bible, we think of getting hit, right? The little angel hit Peter, woke him up. Side note to this, angels are scary to me. I don't know about you guys. When I, every time you read about an angel, they, somebody was sore afraid. I think I'd rather face a demon. I'd probably be scared of that, but I think if I saw an angel, I don't know what I would do. Be so afraid, I guess. So Peter gets up, right? He goes and he finds Mary's house where many were gathered together praying, it says. So let's read verses 13 through 15 now in Acts chapter 12. As Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when, he, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. This is the people that were praying for Peter to get out of prison. They said, Oh, you're crazy, Rhoda. It's got it. He's dead. They didn't believe it, right? So that leads me to my last point today. A healthy church is one that prays and believes. Amen. Yes, these verses make me laugh a little bit because they thought she was crazy. She didn't believe it was Peter. But this is the truth. They had been praying for Peter to get out of prison. When he shows up, they don't believe it. So when we pray one for another, we must truly believe that God will answer the prayers. Amen. One we have to know that we are praying to the one true God, and he hears us. And two, that he answers prayers, and he will do it for us. We see in Acts that the church was gathered praying, and when God answered, they were in disbelief. Let us in today's church not be distracted by what's out there. With all the chaos of the world, when we earnestly go to God in prayer, do we say, God, with my whole heart, I believe that you will do what you say you will. We gotta know who we're praying to and why we're praying. <laughs> and pray with faith and belief. With faith that God will answer our prayers of the church. That He'll be glorified in our prayers because He commands us to. That God he hears each prayer and He wants us to go to Him with them always. Let's never go to the Lord in prayer with a mindset that this ain't gonna happen, but I'll pray for it. We've got to change that mindset. 
The moment you allow Jesus Christ to come and the Holy Spirit to indwell in you, you got on Team God. You got on the miracle worker. The one that parted the seas. The one that rains fire down. The one that came down and deemed each one of us worthy to die for our sin. That's what team we're on. That's who we're praying to, amen? So never go to God in prayer to think, yep, I'll pray for you, Brother Frank, but eh, I don't know about this is going to happen. Go to God with an earnest mind and an open heart that he is the miracle worker. The Bible tells us that Satan's roaming about. He's trying to destroy God's true New Testament church. Isn't that right? And guess what? He can walk right through those doors at any time. If we let him. The devil hates that we gather together and praise and worship God. He's looking for that crack in our armor. Push our way into our life. God gave us his church to help battle that old serpent, right? The whole armor of God. I'll keep saying it to my end. We are to be warriors for Christ while we are here. Amen. And the only way to do that is to put on that whole armor of God every day. And we know those verses in Ephesians, but what comes after the whole armor of God? In verse 18, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance, supplication for all saints. That's all of us here. We put that armor of God on. We've got that going for us. We are praying each one of us prays for the other one, right? But if you have that whole armor of God and you leave it in your closet, how much good is it doing you? I mean, I got golf clubs I never use. They're not doing me any, they don't do me any good when I golf either, but I'm saying, <laughs> I got golf clubs. They, don't, they sit in the garage. Put that whole armor of God on every day. Go to battle. Because Satan wants to win. We know Jesus wins in the end, right? To wrap it up tonight, please remember these three facts about a praying church. Church must pray with a purpose. We need to focus our prayers on those that need it and what they need. Number two, we must pray without ceasing. It says that, right? Let us boldly and fervently pray one for another. Not just on Sundays and Wednesdays, but all day. Reach out to a brother or sister this week and say, what can I pray for you for? And earnestly go to God with that. Number three, put... Faith. Put our faith in our prayers. Not just something we do to check a box, went through the prayer list, yep, 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 prayed for them. That's not what God wants. God wants that humble heart. He wants us to turn from our ways and to really pray. Because we must know who we are asking and what he does, right? Amen. He's the miracle worker. He has done things that we could never even imagine. And he's coming back. So with that, with the song leaders and musicians come up. With every eye closed and every head bowed, I'd ask you here tonight to remember, if you haven't made that choice to accept the one that paid the price, paid it all for you, why not tonight? Right, that if you're struggling with something that is keeping you from fulfilling what God has called you to do, you can ask for prayer tonight. If tonight feels like Satan may be winning the battles in your life, I'm looking out at a whole lot of prayer warriors. Let them know. Let them know what you need God to kick Satan out of your life with. And tonight, if you know you could be praying more earnestly for one another, let it start tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. And God, we are so thankful that you founded your church that we could be part of it. God, it is a great honor. Let us pray one for another. God, let us know that nothing is too big or too small for you, God. That your son was there, he created it all, and he'll be coming back again, God, to take us back. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Would you stand?
thank everybody for giving me the chance to bring God's word tonight. With that, Brother Jared Harris, would you close us in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that we're able to come back here again to hear your word, Lord. Just help us to open our hearts and minds, Lord, apply it to our lives. And uh, Lord, when we when we pray, just uh, help us to believe, Lord, that the words that we're saying will come true, that your will will be done in each and every prayer that we pray. Uh, be with us as we go through the rest of this week. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.